Yes, Fritz. Yeah, Fritz, I'm going to have to call you back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to France. It's time for the fifth league final of the season. We're here, we're live. Welcome to the 2019 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup and welcome to Champagny and Bonnois. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Champagny. In a few moments' time, the lead finals will be getting underway. But before we get underway, we want to show you something that we've been working on for the last couple of days. We caught up with the Ladevan brothers, one of whom is in the finals. Let's take a look at the interview with Le Frère Ladevan. Yeah, so basically I think we we had a mother that had different convictions than some other people and it impacted a lot on our lives and so we started uh, doing a lot of homeschooling uh, that left us a lot of time for uh, practicing sport, doing music, uh, spend a lot of time uh, outdoor. I think it changes a little bit our side of our vision of, of living, living our lives. Yeah, I think that that makes us uh, learn how to be, you know, out sometimes alone and, you know, just <laughs> be there and survive, if I can say that. Having having your brother on the same competition as you're climbing, um, yeah, it's it's even more powerful, I think, because uh, yeah, you have pressure for yourself, but sometimes you feel a lot of pressure for yeah. for for your brother. Sometimes when it comes to cheering, uh, it's horrible pressure <laughs> when he's climbing. Yeah. Yeah. For example, when his first semi-finals in Beijing two years ago. Yeah, I was so happy for him, you know, but even more than I would be from, for myself because I would be uh, concentrating on my climbing and everything. And when you're on the other side, you can just like fit completely. And that's, that's pretty crazy. We are really trying to help ourselves to, to grow up. And yeah. I think yeah, it's, it's motivation between yeah, the it's motivation. Others. There is, of course, a bit of rivality, you know, but I think it's really 100% positive. So I think climbing for us does not brings us together, but it definitely makes it stronger. I would say that we leave a lot of. Um, like very very strong moments together because of climbing because it's what we do because it's our lives so it's like all the time it's about climbing and um, all the time we spend out there it's yeah it makes us stronger uh, together for sure Ladies and gentlemen, here we are, and a very warm welcome 
to Champagny en Vanois. We are about to get underway with the fifth lead final of the 2019 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup season. We have whittled down almost 80 competitors to the final eight in men's and women's. And we have had all kinds of weather and all kinds of beauty. And that has been beautiful. Joining me today is my co-commentator, Kendra Stritch of the USA. Kendra, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Liam. Uh, it's great to have you on board, and I'm mm -hmm. delighted to welcome to you the, welcome you to the booth, but uh, you tell me that you're not going to start with me. You know, my very close friend, Emer McSwiggin, is out first, and I love cheering her on in person and yelling the time for her. She really likes to have that last minute call and um, I'd really like to go out and do that for her. Well, okay, fine. I'll just have to deal with that, I guess. Um, I'll let you get out there and uh, go and cheer for her. We'll welcome you back after Emo McSwiggins climbed. Um, whilst Kendra does that, I'm going to give you guys the start lists. We have eight men and eight women. Let's take a look at the men's start list to begin. First athlete out will be Chang Hyun Lee of Korea. He'll be followed by Dmitry Grobenikov of Russia. Alexei Marshalov will be next from Russia. Mohamed Reza Safdarian follows him from Iran. Nikolai Kuzovlev of Russia will follow him. Out sixth will be Hyung Park of Korea. Luna Ladovon, the local boy, will be out seventh for France. And Yannick Glatard, who qualified first yesterday for Switzerland, will be out eighth. In the women's competition, as Kendra just alluded to, Ema McSwiggan of Ireland will be our first climber out. She'll be followed by Han Nare Song of Korea. Marion Tomas, another local for France, will be out third. Marion Filipova of Russia, fourth. Maria Talakanina, fifth. Yunsun Shin of Korea, sixth. Zainab Kobra Musavi, seventh for Iran. And Petra Klingler will be out eighth. Our first place qualifier, the athletes competing in reverse order this afternoon. Wherever you are tuning in from, uh, we would love to hear from you here on the broadcast, regardless of where you are watching this. Uh, we have lots of people tuning in, lots of different channels. Couldn't be easier. You can use the hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing on any of the social media platforms. We will see that. Similarly, you can contact me directly on any of the social media platforms. Just search at Liam Lonsdale. You can send me a direct message uh, with questions, etc., etc. Tag me in your posts. We love to hear from you. Lots of people already getting involved in that chat. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get this thing going. Ema McSwiggan, our first athlete representing Ireland. Qualified in eighth place yesterday. Nine women tops. We had the unfortunate situation where nine tops happened, but only eight athletes can go through. And so Enni Bertling just missed out on finals. Speaking of Enni Bertling, uh, one of our regulars and the broadcasters let us know that he's come up with a name for her fan club called the Entourage which I think is absolute genius. We now have the McSwooners and the Entourage. I think we need to come up with some fan club names for the male athletes as well. But as always, whoever you're cheering for and wherever you're cheering from, we would love to hear from you. Ema McSwiggan now preparing to begin her route. Allez, c'est parti. 5.59, and so she begins. First time that we've seen this athlete climb, starts on the steep ice section, directly opposite the commentary booth. And immediately leaves the ice and now moves up onto the steep wooden section. Female athletes have six minutes to climb their route. 18 quick draws in total, including the top, much longer than the 10 quick draw route from yesterday's semi final. Thank <laughs> you. 
sera à niveau accessible jusqu'à 20h, une fois les deux hommes passés. Moving through these technical sections. In the lower section, lots of clips in close proximity on this low part of the route, already at clip number four. Just looking for the best position on that left hand. Nima currently sits in fourth place in the overall rankings, finished eighth in Korea, second with a silver medal in China, ninth in Switzerland and fourth in Italy. Makes clip six in that deep lock with the right hand and takes the hook side on with the left, stands up into that volume. Moves up into the upper parts of this wooden structure, heading towards the next ice section. Throws in that figure four with the left leg over the right hand to take the next position. Again into that reversed hook with the left hand by clip number eight, which she's made. Two minutes 23 on the clock. Into the Stein with the right hand. Makes clip number nine. That's halfway through the clips now for Ema McSwiggan. Reaches up above her into that hook in the underside of the structure. Just trying to decide whether to go into the middle grip or the high grip. Nima has two triggers on that tool there, so it gives her a little bit more ability to rest in different points on the tools or rest her hand rather on different points of the tools. That section there is completely overhanging, completely horizontal. You see the rope around her outside. She now clipped the rope underneath her, which isn't a problem, but needs to be careful of that, that she doesn't tie herself in knots as tens made, and she continues moving with one minute and 30 seconds now. Flex the rope around herself to use her shoulder to kind of pull it along with her, and clip 11 beckons. There it is. Makes the clip. You hear the fans and most likely friends shouting one minute to Ima and watch how she accelerates now. Ima known for a conservative initial pace and then someone says a minute and all of a sudden she finds a gear that you just wouldn't have thought was possible. Moves quickly around the ice section with 42 seconds on the clock. Can we give Amir some support, please, ladies and gentlemen? We are. You see how high she is there. About to give the final moves to the top, straight ahead. They're interesting that she's reaching up for that clip, but I don't think that that's the right clip. I can't see the number of the orange clip you can see behind her, but it wouldn't make sense that you should clip high to then clip low. Could be a... That is clip 13, I'm being told. 
the not worried about the drag and her time's out at clip 13. That's Ema McSwiggan's attempt over. She'll go immediately to the ice box. She's a little bit tangled in a cramp on there. She's all good. Ways to the crowd. We'll have to wait and see how that compares to the rest of the athletes. Well, she sits in provisional first place. Lots of people very supportive of Ema, as always. All the McSwooners out there. Kendra Stritch about to rejoin me and we'll see what she thinks of that performance. And our first male athlete begins his route and it is of course Chen Hyun Lee of Korea. Kendra, welcome back. Thank you, Liam. Uh, that was good. Yeah, she climbed well, just slower than she'll be happy with. I don't know why you shot one minute when there's a minute left. Why do you not shot it when there's three minutes left? <laughs> I she have, goes so fast. She does. Um, because she knows better. And then she doesn't trust the timing. I want to see Emma McSwiggan blasting at that speed for the entire route. She's so impressive when she pulls it on like that turns it on like that rather you know she just finds another gear that you just don't it, after she's climbed so conservatively it's so hard to see like oh my gosh where did that come from anyway Ema sits in provisional first place 13 clips made before the timer ran out and now we turn our attention to Chang Hyun Lee how's the route setting been here so far Kendra it's been easy or conservative for the women we've been a bit disappointed the moves have been pretty small but for the men we've seen some bigger moves they've been consistently on these long steeper um, walls so um, it's not been anything spectacular but it's been solid route setting yesterday we had the unfortunate occurrence where nine females topped and only eight can go through correct what was the uh, the mood amongst the athletes last night? I unfortunately we're staying in lots of different places here, whereas in the other tours we're kind of all in the same spot. So I didn't get to chat to anybody. What was the the sentiment? Everybody was disappointed that it came down to that. Even the athletes that qualified high because they were quick, they were disappointed that it had come down to that uh, to get into finals. It came down to time. Um, so any Bertling of Finland, unfortunately, was that ninth competitor who topped and did not get to go on to finals. Commiserations to any, but I think we have a consolation prize in that we've found a name for a fan club. Really? The Entourage. And what is that? Oh, the Entourage. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's good, Liam. That good wasn't work. me. That was no? someone on the broadcast, but yeah, great work from uh, all of the ice climbing fans. If you are just joining us, a very warm welcome to Champagne of Amois. We're here with the lead finals, the fifth lead finals of the 2019 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup season. And you are watching Chang Hyun Lee, our first male competitor in this finals, moving very well indeed. Five minutes, 30 seconds is the uh, full time that these athletes got. He's got two minutes and five seconds remaining as he makes that clip there. And so this puts him up onto the upper half of the wall once he gets past that ice and then there's a, a new head wall that they open up for finals above this the extender wall the go go gadget head wall chang hyun lee climbing now with clip 12 mania 17 total just over one minute 42 make those next five clips kendra stritch joining me in the studio today from team usa oh pops there left hand he looks so controlled kendra he was We'll see that again in a second, but that was really from nowhere. He'd been moving very well. All of a sudden, he was off. So he had that right hand in the 
inverted undercut, switches it to the high grip, to the left hand, leans away with the right foot, and it just pops out of there. Slight bit of pick shift, perhaps. Yeah, it looks like he pulled out on that enough to shift the pick out of the sweet spot. Cheng Hyun Lee there with 12 clips made. We'll have to wait and see where that puts him. You can see a little shake of her head there. Wasn't quite happy with performance. Next athlete out in the women's competition, Han Nare Song. Pretty peculiar to see her in seventh place qualifying, Kendra. Yeah, well, this is another symptom of or consequence of it coming down to time in the semifinals. So she was just slightly slower than six of the other women. And um, so it put her down lower than normal. Indeed. Well, there is Han Nare Song. She currently, in the overall rankings, sits in third place behind Wun Xun Shin and Maria Tolokanina. She has 221 points. Three bronze medals this season. 13th place in China. Not quite found that winning form yet. Very rare that Han Nare Song doesn't win a competition in a season. So maybe this is the one. Yeah, she has this one and one more. Well, I was chatting to her the other day and she hadn't registered for Denver. But she's thinking about it. I hope to see her there. I also hope to see her competing in Denver. We'll have to wait and see if that's the case. Reaches up the high grip on the left hand with the right to that hook and moves past clip from number one. What's this structure like to climb on, Kendra? It's a really fun structure with all of the ice, and the ice is really good and solid this year. So it's very interesting how you can move from the plywood to the ice and back again multiple times on the routes. And um, they have the different steepnesses also. So it's a pretty versatile structure. It can get a little dark climbing on the inside of it. It's... um. It's funny because, well, not funny. It's not funny at all, actually. But it's interesting because um, people that are new to the sport who watch the other competitions often say, this is ice climbing. Where's all the ice? And here in Champagny, we have all this ice. And the biggest problem with ice is that it's very difficult to make it hard enough to split the competitors. And, of course, what we see here is them dropping that time down or making those moves easier and making it more of a sprint. That's kind of the compromise, I guess. And I suppose from a spectator's point of view, it depends whether you like to see powerful, dynamic jumps and, you know, these crazy moves that we've seen in some of the competitions like South Spain, Rabenstein in Korea, or whether you want to see these kind of sprint sections up the ice if you want ice in your ice climbing World Cup. What's your preference, Kendra? Uh, I prefer to have the more gymnastic, dynamic you know, climbing with a little bit less ice. I love going ice climbing separately, but um, the real uniqueness of this sport is the unique, is the big dynamic stuff. Yeah, sure, and we've seen that becoming more and more prevalent in the route setting. Um, as the seasons advance, Hamare Song now approaching the upper part of that steep overhanging wooden panel, which turns into a fully horizontal roof. One of the uniquenesses of this structure that we're not using this year is that overhang, excuse me, overhanging ice up on the headwall. Uh -huh. And in past years, we've had routes that cut straight across that, but we, we don't have that this year. Any theories as to why? No, just the route, <laughs> setters, the route setters chose not to. Yeah. I thought for sure we would with how good the ice is. Yeah, the ice is in amazing condition this year. They've had some really, really favorable weather in Champagny the past few weeks. Um, meters and meters of snow. Um, and it's been cold as well. And you can see the ice. And it really is as blue as it looks on your screen. Um, that is not a color filter. It's so, so vividly blue. Hanare Song now moving into that roof section. That hanging hook there with the left hand and places the left tool into the box. Figure nine, left leg over left hand. Switches to a four with the left leg over the right hand. Back to the nine to make clip number 10. 
Two minutes and 18 seconds on the clock. And she's uh, 46 seconds ahead of Ema McSwigan at this point. You can see from those clip times, those split times, you get a pretty good idea of the difference between each athlete and how quickly they've moved from one point to the next and she reaches up high interestingly climbing right up there to put 12 moving towards 13 now Kendra you were outside watching him I'm interested to get your thoughts on this next clip it appears that they're clipping it up to clip down and then go back up again is that exactly how it is or is that a perspective illusion now that's how it is is that not going to put a lot of drag in the system I believe it will. Oh. I think there's already quite a bit of drag at this section. Okay, well, we'll see how that evolves for the athletes. She reaches all oh, a little foot pop there, but strong in the tools. That right hand wasn't going anywhere in the ice, and the left hand in the good hook position to make clip 14 with a minute remaining. What's he doing? Photographer up there in the green jacket. Look at that, they're in the ice. Kendra, you were asking. Yep, they are using it. That's great. So they hum that song, climbs up this steep overhanging ice. Quite hard to get a, a feel. Oh, a little pop of the pick there. These tools not designed for swinging into the ice like that. You know, it's very difficult to get a good placement like a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a specific ice axe word, an ice axe designed specifically for that purpose. A tool with a straighter shaft, uh, less curvature than these tools. Oh, and she's popped that left hand but manages to hold it. Swings around and that clock's ticking down. Three seconds remain. She does have clip 15 made. That's going to be time up for her. Heart in mouth stuff there for Hanare Song of Korea. Solid performance there, Kendra. Yeah, it was great to see her get onto that overhanging ice and the drama. You see how good that placement was with the right hand. Enough for her to even hold that spin round on her entire shoulder and, and keep going. <laughs> Next athlete out. Dmitry Gabenikov, the Siberian bear. I know a lot of you were disappointed not to catch his performance yesterday. You'll get the whole thing today. Do not worry about that. Davai Dmitry. Such a unique competitor, Dmitry Kendra. His height, his weight, his build. And he's a unique character on the tour, too. <laughs> this is true. He's very, very friendly. He's a gentle giant. He is. Although, you do know if he gives you a high five or a slap on the back, that as gentle as he tries to be, still knocks the wind out of you. <laughs> yeah, you have to get guy. a good stance. You certainly do. 85 kilos, six foot five. I know I'm moving between metric and imperial, but. I'm just, this is what I've been told. He's really <laughs> tall and he's a big lad. Shoulders wider than five men as he moves up into that next section towards clip number three. The route setter is using that blue volume there to make it steeper to hold that floating undercling. Floating undercling. A lovely turn. Moves up with the left hand to that small screw on. Small edge for the left tool to make. Oh, just fumbles clip number four. There it is. Just to recap, the men have five minutes and 30 seconds, 17 quick draws. Good afternoon to Barres, who's tuned in all the way from Philippines. Good afternoon to Matilda, who's tuned in in Stockholm. 
to everybody who's tuned in. It's great to have you all on board. We love to to hear from you. Remember, you can contact us using that hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing. Whether you have questions, comments, maybe you want to tell us who you think is going to win, whatever it is, get it on the social media channels. We'd love to hear from you. You can contact me directly as well on at Liam Lonsdale on all of the channels. All of them. Every channel. Dmitry Grabenikov now with 3 minutes 24 on the clock, still moving somewhat conservatively in, the, conservatively in this lower part, Kendra. We had some early pops yesterday. Uh, people popped off on this first head wall, and um, I think the competitors are still wary of these holds. They're very hard to read because of the way that they're painted, and they have just small spots where your tool will go on them. So when we can't read the holds well from the ground, it tends to slow down the competitors as they're climbing. Dimitri Grabenikov, 10th in the overall rankings. Placed 6th in Korea, 17th in China, 9th in Italy. Thirty-three seconds behind Chang Hyun Lee of Korea, who had that unfortunate pop just after clip number twelve. If you want to keep up to date with the scores as they happen, you can do so by visiting results.theuiaa.org. They're refreshed live. Click on live results; it's all there for you to see. Otherwise, you can just stick with the broadcast and we'll do our best to tell you. Dmitry Gravenikov there moving up to make clip number 11. Just making his way up that ice, climbing high up the ice there on the left-hand side. Nice tactic. We saw Alexei Marshalov do something similar yesterday. The athletes don't have to use all the holds, and all of the ice is inbound, so he's actually skipping a move to come into that undercling from a, from a higher position. Something that you can do it in his height. Yeah, his, art, his wingspan there really helped him make that move. Kicks across with that right hand and moves right foot onto that blue volume. You can see in his face that he's starting to feel that pump now as he reaches up and hooks with the right hand, catches it. Dmitry Grabenikov moving on that left hand, switches the right leg over the left hand for the figure four. Still moving well with less than 20 seconds to go. 15 seconds on the clock. There's 14 made. You can see that section above him that's been extended. Oh, and he's off. Just as his time was up anyway. Seems pretty happy with that, Kendra. Yeah, I think he is. He um, made it pretty high up on that route. I mean, he, he will know that it's likely that somebody's going to top later on, but he climbed well. Certainly did, and 14 clips made. He really put in a good fight there. just slipped off his tools look how pumped he is <laughs> he's a great athlete and uh i think he gave it everything then yeah and i think yeah, it's always like, satisfying like it, it's like when you can um hack the route a little bit so skipping that hold it is indeed okay let's uh let's switch our attention to marion tomas big crowd here supporting 
the French team, and they're very, very vocal, especially for Marion, Kendra. They are. The French team is known for being loud, which is really fun. Not only is there a French team here, but there's a load of fans as well. There are, and they had a whole group of school kids out yesterday cheering them on as well. Really brought the cavalry along to support their athletes. Looks so far that pace is going to be one of the big deciding factors for this women's route. And she, Song, sorry, in first place with 15 clips made of a total 18. What were you going to say there, Kendra? Well, Marion's moving very quickly here. She is indeed, and we'll get those split times as they happen. She has exactly five minutes on the clock of her six, so a minute elapsed to make it to clip number four. Look at that, 12 seconds ahead of the pace already. Tomas with that left hand just wraps onto that hold. Makes clip number five. Slowed down a little bit, needs to find that pace again now. Ryan Tomas. Makes clip number six. You can hear the French cheering for her in the background. If you are enjoying the broadcast, then please do share it with someone that you think might be interested. Very easy to do. Hit that share button wherever you're watching it from. Or even you can comment the name in the chat box. And Tomas makes clip number seven now with three minutes and 26 on the clock. Reaches up with the right hand and approaches that horizontal roof. We saw both, yep, there's the figure four. I was just gonna say we saw both Emer and Hanare figure four on that. Ryan Tomas moving out into that horizontal section and reaches up and gets the clip going smart move will it waste precious time though it does interesting that she's tried that especially after yesterday where she tried to clip early and it cost her a few seconds when we know and she knows that time's of the essence it, it just doesn't seem like the smartest move Kendra quick draws are worth more points than holds and it's just so tempting I get that I totally get that and I understand the logic but Marion's going to have some idea that clip number 10 is not going to be a, a podium placing position. Rushing for that clip doesn't get her anything other than wasting her time. Look, she's 14 seconds behind after being so far ahead. I agree. She would agree. I'm sure she would. I'm going to tell her after. Definitely one of the crowd favourites, Marion Tomas. Moves now up into that ice section and definitely needs to find some pace. Takes a second to shake and you can hear the French crowd. Ale, 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 willing her on. They know how important time is. Needs to keep moving now, really doesn't have time to shake. It's the ice box. Current first place, Dmitry Gravenikov and Hanare Song.
just starting to look a little bit flustered, Kendra. She knows that she has less than a minute here, and this is not enough to be happy with. This is her home structure. This is her home crowd. With 29 seconds remaining, 25 seconds behind. She really needs to pull a miracle out of the bag if she wants to be in with a chance of first place. Doesn't have time to be shaking like that, and I know that sometimes it feels like that's all you've got, but she needs to make one more move, one more move. Get that clip. Seven seconds remain. She needs this next clip. Time up for Marion Thomas. Valiant effort from the French climber. Asks the French crowd for some support. What do we put that down to, Kendra? I really feel like a little bit more experience and she would have stopped shaking and just moved much, much faster and been aggressive to get to that clip. To have that clip so close and to be shaking in the ice just didn't seem like the smartest smartest idea without wishing to be too critical i think she just had a few small experience things that slowed her down that the hold at the top of the first head wall she didn't immediately read it and go into a figure four to get up into the undercling and then trying to make that clip early right above that also just every little bit makes a difference yeah yeah i totally agree and uh, I, I don't wish to be too critical but you know, we can be critical, we can analyze, we can talk about these things. We have the luxury of a, a screen and action replays in front of us. And um, yeah, it's nothing that I wouldn't say to Marion either. And it's really great actually to be so deeply involved with the community and to be able to have these chats. After every comp pretty much, I, I always say, you know, what happened or how do you feel? And, and we get some really in-depth feedback. So yeah, great effort from Marion Tomas. Isn't enough to see her into first place provisionally. That will see her into uh, third place provisionally. Sorry, no, you have to excuse me. Second place provisionally ahead of Ema McSwiggan. Next athlete out. Yesterday he was wearing a head torch. Today it's not necessary. Alexei Marshalov of Russia. He was my favorite climb of the semifinals yesterday. I'm so happy that I was out early and I get to watch him because he just skipped the whole roof by going out onto the ice that was inbounds and it was genius. It was very, very smart climbing from Alexei Marshalov. I, um, I was very impressed, and especially when I watched back the replay because during the actual climb itself, we were somewhat distracted having two athletes on the wall at once and you know there's so much going on during those semi-finals it's easy to miss things but he really really excelled in that semi-final yesterday and if you didn't catch it don't worry you can see the replay on youtube on the uiaa channel uh, that's up there forever and ever so uh, yeah you can always watch that semi-final back and find alexia marshalos amazing effort places his left tool matches in to take it with a high grip with the left hand on that very small edge into the floating undercling moves up with the right hand we've not seen him at many rounds this season election alexei marshalov currently sits even outside of the top 20 i think let just check that no, just inside the top 20. He's 19th, finished 9th in Switzerland and 16th in Italy. Moving over this step in the structure. You see there the panels kick out and back again. Gives the athletes time if they want to kick into those panels and get some weight through the feet, but really we know they don't really have time to do that they don't and it can be a little awkward getting on top of that and that small edge with the left hand reaches up with the right just behind the pace set by Chen Hyung Lee Clip seven made. Oh, 
into the Stein. And now into the horizontal section of the structure. Again, climbing onto that ice and cutting loose on the right hand to kick in underneath into the box. Moves up towards clip number 11 as he climbs through the ice. Two minutes and 19 seconds on the clock. There's clip 12. He's in a good position in the ice with the left hand. He went to skip that move, and that gives you an idea of the difference of size of Grabenikov and Marshalov. Grabenikov reached into that very easily, but Marshalov a little bit of trouble. Makes it work for him eventually, and comes into the high grip with the left hand where Chang Hyun Lee fell. Oh, and he's off. We'll see that on the replay, but it looked like he didn't quite get the position with the right tool and then lost tension with the left. Very steep part of the wall, that Petra. I know I said Petra, but I meant Kendra. <laughs> it's the same word, but, um, but for two, three letters. <laughs> You're right. It's the same, but different. I must have been reading Petra's name on my sheet. It's all good. I'll take it if I can get a little bit of her climbing. You've both been in the commentary booth with me this season. So, I'm, you know, I'm just not reading it. At least I didn't call you John. Agreed. <laughs> Alexei Marshalov finishes his attempt at this finals route just past clip number 12. That left pick popping out, not able to hold the swing. And our next athlete, our first Russian athlete in the women's competition is Mariam Filipova. Just to remind you, all eight of these female athletes topped the route yesterday, the order coming down to time. Marianne Filipova moving up the first section of ice to move into that wooden section. And past that first clip. Moves nicely through that lower section. Looks a little bit tense. Interesting that there was a small pop there. The shoulders were really, really elevated then. And you can tell how relaxed the climber is often by their shoulder position. That raised shoulder isn't a strong position either. Um, several years ago now, I was going to say not that long ago, but now I think about it. Several years ago, I um, did some unofficial research into shoulder position uh, after one of my climbing partners had a very bad shoulder injury. And one of the things that I really noticed was when the shoulder is up and forward, it's very prone and very weak. And if you watch the strongest ice climbers and as well with sport climbing, the shoulders that are down and back are much more powerful, much more stable, and they're able to pull in these very difficult positions. So when we see those shoulders raised, and I'll try and point it out to you again in a second, when we see them raised, it's kind of a danger sign. You know, it's more prone to injury, but it's also a weaker position just in general terms of the move. Marion Filipova seems to be regaining that relaxed state now as she moves higher up the route. Makes clip six. Just 
struggling to find the placement there. And I see what you mean, Kendra. That would be impossible to read from the floor. Yeah, last night's semifinals route, the the breadth of knowledge and experience that we have in that women's group, they all stood at the bottom of that route and were like, we don't know what these holds are. They're painted dark. It's dark out. There's a spotlight randomly shining over the wall, and everybody went back into isolation and was like, well, I guess we'll find out when we climb. <laughs> hey, you did well yesterday. I made it into semifinals. I, I was excited about really well. that. Well, thank you. Yeah, and um, yeah, I was stoked to see you in the semis, and you climbed like you deserved to be there. Thank you. Maria and Philippa were moving now, fig four over the left hand. You saw how quickly she just moved into that. She knew that that's what she needed to do there. She's been competing for 10 years. Yeah, very, very experienced. And that's what we're talking about, as we talked about before with Marion. Sometimes that lack of experience, there's a hesitation, there's a pause between deciding which way to throw the move, which leg to throw into the figure four, whether to do a figure four or just to lock it down for the pulver. Fully committed in that decision before she'd even got to the hold. And it'll be interesting to see where she ranks in the time as she reaches up to make clip 10. Nice work. A lot of these athletes look make those clips very look very easy to clip, but those long swinging draws can actually be quite difficult to, to get in your hand and get clipped. Yeah, for sure. Again, it comes down to experience and you see places the finger inside the draw to secure it and then push the rope into it. Filipova now with the clip 10 was 10 seconds ahead. We'll get the next split in a few seconds. There, it's six seconds ahead of Hanare Song. Kendra, is it true that this is your favorite song? No. <laughs> I wonder if you play along then. Obviously not. Mm -hmm. Don't call the Kendra no sense of humor stretch for nothing. <laughs> just play, just play. I'm just worried there that Kendra's about to punch me while we're commentating. Marianne Philippova now with one minute 20 on the clock. Makes clip number 12 and advances up that ice section. see clip 14 below her as she reaches up to make clip 13 as she said the leg there to keep that slack out reaches right to the left side of the ice places that good solid hook with the left hand you reckon it'd be possible to span all the way across to the ice on the other side there Kendra hard to say I mean for Dimitri <laughs> yes I'm just wondering if any of the competitors are... Oh no, she's off! I was not expecting that. But she was also pulling the rope and not getting slack, so I don't know what was going on there. Let's take a look at that replay. Let's see the, the tool. So she's in a solid position. And that's a definite pop with the left hand. Let's see if we can see it from another angle. It looks like you saw it. The ice was just, uh, sorry, the rope was just caught around the ice as she was trying to pull that slack in. And uh, hard to say for sure, but it looks like that extra force from the pull just lost some of the isolation that she had in that left hand and that popped her out of there. I agree. Unfortunately, that's not a technical because it was the ice that was holding the rope, if that's the case. Absolute nightmare for Money and Philippe, is it? not her season she's not had a bad year it has to be said but she's not quite managed to get on that podium yet 13th in Korea 4th in Switzerland 13th in Italy let's take a look at the provisional rankings as Mohamed Reza Darian begins his climb. I can give you those rankings now. In the women's competition, Ima McSwiggan is fourth, Marianne Philippova third, Marianne Tomas second, Hannare Song still 
in first and as Mohamed Reza Safdarian begins his route and climbs up into that looks like he's got a stein there actually Kendra he does but I think he's going to have to turn that yeah there goes yeah, floating the floating undercling uh, the men's results at the moment third place is Chang Hyun Lee second place Alexei Marshalov first place Dmitry Grabenikov with our fourth athlete Mohamed Reza Safdarian making his way Five minutes, 30 seconds on the clock for the beginning. He's already just oh, just under a minute. Four minutes, 31 exactly remaining. Uh, 17 quick draws total on this route as he moves past five. Onwards towards clip number six. Of course, Mohamed Reza Safdarian was the first Iranian athlete to ever take a medal in a ice climbing competition for an Iranian athlete. Uh, it was the bronze medal in South Fe 2017, 2018, and then the following weekend in Ravenstein, he took the version of a gold medal for a really an athlete, which was an amazing achievement. No medals so far this season. It's been very, very close. There behind him to make clip number eight. Very nice and fast into that. Figure nine with the right leg over the right hand. Slightly ahead of the pace so far, which is what we would expect from Mohamed Reza Safdarian. Very quick athlete, makes clip number nine. Interesting to see how each athlete interprets the ice and which part of it they use. There are drilled holes in most of this ice, but many of them are not marked. Some of them are marked with those little blue spray paint dots. Climbs higher into that ice on the left hand side of the structure now. seconds ahead of the pace makes the next clip Number 12 opts to use that hook unlike the Russians who continued at the ice reaches into that powerful undercling move still 19 seconds ahead of the pace matches in with the left tool and you can see how steep oh and he's off Another athlete falling foul to that very tricky move with the right hand. That was a surprise, Kendra. He was moving so well. Very surprising. Let's see that one more time. Left hand popped first. Interesting. That's what happened to Chan Chun Lee as well. Wow. Let's watch it again one more time. Really nice close angle there. Great work, Mr. Cameraman. Oh, and he's just moved out. <laughs> I take it back. Sack him. No, I'm joking. Lovely shots there. Great work, as always, from our camera team. And you can see a little look of um, bemusement, almost, from Mohamed Reza Safdarian. It's never a good sign when an athlete unties their own rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, Olga Kozak was talking about that yesterday um, in our route analysis. She said... She always knows that she's tried hard when someone has to untie for her because she's totally boxed. Next athlete, this competition in all black. Maria Tolkadina. The Ice Queen. Current ranked number one in the overall rankings. She's taken three golds so far this season. One in Korea, one in China, one in Italy. Fourth gold here would guarantee her the overall title. Ready to look our fifth athlete in the women's competition. Still to climb, Yun Xion Shin, Zainab Kobra Musavi, and Petra Klingler. Mm 
Hey Liam, can you explain how somebody is going to, could already be um, winning the whole series when we still have one more competition? Yeah. Uh, you get 100 points for a win. And Maria has won three rounds. She has 100 points. And Chun Shin has 284 points. She's 60 points behind them. And, oh no, Chun Shin's in the final. Hmm. Okay, let me do the maths quickly. If she wins here, that puts her on 440 points. Chun Shin, Shin, if she comes, says so she comes eighth at the worst possible result, which would give her... 40 points that would put Winchin Shin on 320 and if she won she'd be on 420 then she'd win so she could win she's not guaranteed I have to take it back except one of them gets dropped oh yeah one result gets dropped oh yeah so she'll have 400 points if she wins here 500 points if she wins in the USA I don't even know nobody knows what it means no, I think you're right. I think that she would secure first place. If, if she, she wins here. Yeah. Because she'll have four first place. Yeah, and it's and impossible to Five competitions will count towards your overall score. Exactly. And so nobody else will be able to win four. And Unshan Shin, who's her closest competitor, has a second, a first, a second, and a 14th, which massively reduces her points potential. Even if she drops that... 14th position and wins the next one she wouldn't have enough points I knew there was logic in what I was saying it made me nervous then Kendra I was panicking sorry and maths isn't my strong point it really isn't I got an A in maths at school I worked really really hard for it and I'm I'm absolutely terrible at it 35 seconds ahead of the pace I can tell you that much I don't need to be Einstein to see that 35 he wasn't even a mathematician 35 seconds ahead of the pace Maria Tolokanina now into that roof moves up to the next hole below click number 10 and throws the right leg over the left hand for that figure four position there's clip 10 all of the years of experience show in her efficiency moving onto these holds clipping everything yeah it's really phenomenal and i uh, i have mentioned it a couple of times this weekend and i've mentioned it on my social media too but we did an interview with maria tolokanina in rabenstein and um maria's english is is okay it's not amazing uh, so we did the interview in russian and we didn't really know what she was saying but i just had a really good feeling that the translation was going to come out brilliantly and the interview is by far one of the best we've ever done. Uh, I do encourage you to, to head over to the UIAA YouTube channel and watch that Maria Tolokanina video. It's really beautiful and gives you an insight into one of the sport's true great athletes. Maria Tolokanina now with two minutes and five seconds on the clock, moving leftwards into that ice position. Clip 14 beckoning. Reaches down. Look at that, Kendra. 46 seconds ahead of the pace. This is the pace she needs to be on and keep up to make it to the top. Reaches up with the left hand into the ice. And this is the steepest ice section on the route now. Need to ask somebody to turn the big light on. It's getting quite dark out there. It's not quite as dark as it appears on your screen, I have to say. But it's not... Um, not blazing sunshine. Maria Tolokanina makes clip 15. Continues through this ice section. A minute and six seconds faster than Hanare Song making that clip. Stands to reason as Hanare Song ran out of time there. 18 clips to be made and she's got less than a minute to make them. 57 seconds left on the clock. Maria Tolokanina of Russia moving ever closer to that top spot. Up onto the corner of that entreprise volume. Into the Gaston position. Makes clip number 16. 30 seconds remain. Kendra, I don't want to call it, but that's a lot to ask even of Maria Tolokanina. 
I'm just loving watching her climb this. She's being super efficient and fast. 15 seconds remaining. Efficient and fast is exactly what she's being. And she takes that granite hold with the left tool. Willing her on with seven seconds on the clock. That top is so, so close. Stands up off the volume and rope drag is so intense. The time's up and it's not going to count. Oh, Maria Tolokanina is so, so close. Kendra, summarize that one for me. She moved very consistently and efficiently up that whole route, but that just not enough time to get through all of that. There's a lot of traversing, a lot of ground to cover, and only six minutes. <sighs> Felt like I held my breath for that six minutes. Um, I'm very interested now because Maria Tolokanina, as we've just said has been dominant all season she's also been one of the fastest all season now we did see in qualifying uh, excuse me in semi-finals yesterday that there were several athletes faster three in fact faster than her um i wonder if she's getting a little bit tired but petra klingler zenab kovar musavi and yun shunshin still to climb and all with i would say a pretty decent shot at that podium Rachel Kanina climbs away into first place and takes her seat in the ice box next to current first place Dmitry Grabenikov. Next athlete in the men's competition is Nikolai Kuzovlev. Nikolai Kuzovlev, another Russian that's been dominant this season. Makes Maria Tolkanina's record look bad. Three gold medals and one silver medal, 380 points. A win here would definitely, definitely put him into an unassailable lead. A lead there, even Hyung Park, whose current second place, wouldn't be able to catch up. Um, yeah, he's, he's way ahead of the pack. He is, and you know, the first after the first two comps, we started. People started asking questions like, "Has anybody ever gotten all first place in a season?" Uh, my knowledge, not looking at my spreadsheet of glory, I'm going to say no. That's never happened. If you go back far enough to when we only had three World Cups in a season, it has been done. Okay, my records don't go back that far. Exactly. My records that I have available to me go back to 2011. Yeah, so we've all agreed it's pretty much not happened in modern. If it happened before 2011, did it happen? Did it even happen? If it wasn't on Instagram, was it real? Depends on what world you live in. <laughs> Nikolai Kuzovlev moving really quickly through this low section. Clip number five made as he moves on to that panel with this slight kick in it. I need a better name for that, Kendra. Help me out. What do we call that? What can we call it? Hump? No, I don't like that. Step? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah? Okay. I feel like it needs a character. Mystery Step? There's nothing mysterious about was, it. Where was it last year that we were naming the hanging? Oh, yeah. Was that two years ago? That was last year, and it was in... Um, ho, 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 tuh. We had the hanging thing, and we had some amazing names coming in for it. I can't even remember the what, what we chose in the end, but it was a good one. One second ahead of the pace. Nikolai Kuzovlev as he reaches up a deep lock off the figure four on the left hand to take the hole on the right. Makes clip number nine. Eleven seconds ahead of the pace. Moves up into the ice section now. It's clip number 11. Let's see what he does with this move. He does opt for that higher position. Thirteen seconds ahead of the pace. Reaches under internet very powerful undercut move. It's caught a few climbers out. Nikolai Kuzovlev, not one of them, as he steps across easily into that right-hand position. So he took that hold on the right? He did. 
where Dreza had tried to take it directly on the left. Same as uh, Alexei Marshalov as well. Into that good hook with the right hand. He has the left leg over the right hand into the figure four, switches it back to left leg over left hand for the figure nine. Lovely hold there into that Stein with the right. Very, very steep. It's hard to work out that angle. We're completely underneath him. It's almost horizontal, this section of wall. You see the photographers peering over the top. Still has four more clips to make. One minute 40 to make them. One minute, 28 seconds ahead of the pace. Makes clip 15. One minute, 10 seconds on the clock as he reaches out with the left hand, misses it first time. He's in first place now with that 15th clip made. Cuts loose and kicks in hard as he centers his body below that hold. Switches the right hand into the high grip. Figure four over the right hand and he's got 35 seconds remaining. Again, this is a lot to ask, 30 seconds left. Will he make clip 18 into that very powerful undercling position? A lot of tension required. 17 seconds left. Still only got clip 15 made. 10 seconds on the clock. There's clip 16. Five seconds remain. Oh, and he catches the top hold and misses it. He goes flying. Tool goes flying. He was extraordinarily close. No top for Nikolai Kuzovlev, who threw everything he had. Everything he had at that one. Now, I need to check my information because I have it here that there's 18 clips for the men. But it's actually uh, 17. Yeah, so no problem. 17 clips for the men. He was one before the top. Good, yeah, glad we got that cleared up. He is in provisional first place. And again, I think it's gonna come down to uh, to the top for the speed. I think there's one man that's definitely capable of doing it. I'm looking at the names on the list remaining to climb. Hyung Park, Luna Ladevon, and Yannick Latard, the Korean Ice King, French Boy Wonder, and Swiss Air. I'll leave it to you guys at home to work out which you think is going to be the athlete that is able to top and able to top in the fastest time. Maybe you might want to comment on which you think it is. Yunchun Shin tying in to her route. Shall we take a quick look at the results so far? I can tell you that in the men's competition. Fifth place is Chang Hyun Lee of Korea. Well, let's do the women's first. Fifth place is Ima McSwigan of Ireland. Fourth place, Marianne Filipova of Russia. Third place, Marianne Tomas of France. Second place, Han Nare Song of Korea. And first place is Maria Tolokanina of Russia. In the men's competition, fifth place is Chang Hyun Lee of Korea. Fourth place is Mohamed Reza Safdarian of Iran. Third place, Alexei Marshalov of Russia. Second place, Dmitry Gavenikov of Russia. First place, also for Russia, is Nikolai Kuzovlev. Now, Unsyon Shin, current second place in the overall rankings, took gold medal in Sasfe in fine style. Capable of topping here, Kendra? Absolutely. I wanted to, I looked up the times from semifinals last night because we were talking about how fast Maria Tolokanina is known for being. Yes. And so she was only two one hundredths of a second 
behind Sunny. And then Zena Cobra only had... No, that was a minute, mate. Four minutes, 43 seconds. So, it's, okay. So, two tenths. Two whole seconds. 443, 441. Yeah, so four minutes and 41 seconds, four minutes and 43 Correct. seconds. So they were only... Two seconds two apart. <laughs> you want to do it again? I was at speed this morning. <laughs> you were at speed this morning. <laughs> okay, you called me the wrong name. I've got minutes That's, and seconds yeah, confused. Yeah, we're good. We're even, Stevens. <laughs> Dear me. Still two seconds. A regular pair of Fibonacci's over here, Kendra Stray <laughs> and myself. Having a little bit of trouble with the uh, with our numbers this afternoon. Bear with us. We're doing our best. We're not here because we're good at maths. We're here because we know about climbing. Yunxian Shin climbing now up the underside of that steep wooden section, directly opposite the commentary booth. Seven seconds behind Maria Tolokanina. She's taking that hold very interestingly there, but she stayed on. Another client dressed in all black. Moves now straight into that figure four over the left hand. Inverts the shoulder to take that Stein. Very powerful move for the shoulder, but In Sun Shin is a phenomenal athlete. Reaches up to place that hook in the whole bike clip number nine and reaches behind her onto the box. Cuts loose and opts to go into the figure nine. Nice little adjustment there. She was thinking of the four. We saw her just switch it around to that next hold. Makes clip 10. seconds behind Maria on that split there. She's going to have to speed it up to make it to the top. Yeah, and I wonder if Yun uh, Chun Shin will deploy some skipping tactics, whether she might miss some moves in this upper section. She is one of the taller athletes. Positive ape index. Maybe she'll be the first climber to skip that move in the middle and go straight from the ice to the other side. I think it's definitely possible. Just a foot position intricacy. This is that left tool. Removes it, not quite happy with the position. There's clip 13. Okay, left tool in. Now I think it is possible to kick that right foot in hard and swing all the way out to the other side of the ice. I think it may be possible, but the question will be, is the power that it takes mm. to hold the swing over worth it? We need an athlete with real explosive power. And hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. Perhaps not the most efficient. Clip 14 made, and she's 30 seconds behind Maria Tolkanina. Fast in this ice section. Clip 15 made. 41 seconds left on the clock. Maria Tolokanina made clip 16, was almost at 17. Yun Shin, 33 seconds, may have left herself with too much to do. She's up with that right hand. 15 seconds on the clock. Oh, a 
it doesn't quite make Clip 16 so much drag in the system. There it is, five seconds left. She's in second place now, behind Maria Tolokanina. It's time out for Yun Xion Shin. Maria Tolokanina stays in the ice box, remains in first place. Waiting to find out what her result was, and our next athlete is another Korean. We go to Hyung Park in just a few seconds, but first let's take a look at the replays. Perhaps we won't look at those replays. Young Park there preparing to climb. Yeah, getting nice and tied in, secured before making his first moves. Whew. Whew. Sharp exhale of breath. Here he goes, five minutes 30 on the clock. Hyung Park out of the gates very quickly there, Kendra. He's just flying up this. I think we can expect him to keep this pace. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree and despite him being one of the older athletes, uh, 37 years old, I believe he is. He still moves with such aggression, such as athleticism. Moving up towards clip number four. Bah, look at that already. 11 seconds ahead of the pace set by Chang Hyung Lee. Into this stepped feature, which we have now dubbed the naughty step. Reaches up with the right hand. Makes that next clip and continues now. Strong position with that left hand in that hook. Makes clip number six. He looks really relaxed. <laughs> he looks relaxed. He looks fast. He looks like he's nine seconds ahead of the pace so far. Young Park moving exceptionally well through this first part of the route and effortlessly slices through the air to place that right leg over the right hand, left leg over underneath him rather there. Kicks strong into the box and makes clip number nine. Moves into that right hand ice section. Clip 10 made. Just one second ahead of Nikolai Kozovlev now with three minutes and three seconds left on the clock. Looks like he's going to opt for that step down move as he takes the rope out to clip number 12. Lots of Korean fans now cheering on the Korean Ice King to take the edge. Interesting that he'd gone so high to then come back down seven seconds ahead of Kuzovlev. Up into that undercling move. Matches him with the left tool in that high grip, which is the position he needs to be in 
Look at that, he's gone out with the right hand. So strong in the shoulder, brilliant chest stability. Excellent back strength. He's not even gonna match in on that hold. Just reaches straight up with the right hand and he's accelerating now. Two minutes and five seconds on the clock for Hyung Park. Is down, he's 11 seconds behind because of left. Lost a little bit of time doing that move onto the edge. Still looks very, very calm, Kendra. This is a beautiful climb. Big reach off that figure four with the left hand and right leg, and he's a second ahead of because of left again. The two climbers neck and neck really in those splits. Just struggling to find that position on the next move. One minute, 10 seconds remaining. Lots of slack in the system now as he reaches up to make clip. 15, there it is. 17 clips total for these guys. Less than a minute remaining. Kicks in hard with that right foot, and moves that body weight out and left. He needs to take that next hold up on the black volume above him. You can see that as he throws the left leg over the right hand for the figure four. Thirty seconds left. Into that powerful undercoat, and he's popped and Sparks flew then. Absolutely sensational, and he really gave it everything that he had. Second place so far for Hyung Park, and let's see if we can see those Sparks again. He was putting so much force through that right hand. Pops out, and wow, that was really quite special. It's a great effort from Hyung Park, but just not quite good enough to see him through to that ice box and to the first place. He'll be in second place ahead of Dmitry Gobekov and behind Nikolai Kozovlev. Next athlete in the men's competition is Luna Ladovon, but before that, we we'll have Zainab Kobra Musavi. Great to see her back in the finals. This is her first competition of the season. Right. Last year she did the whole season. This year we've not really seen her. Any idea why that is, Kendra? Well, there's a lot of politics going on globally and um, it's made it harder for many of the athletes to travel, but especially the Iranian team. Mm -hmm. Not just athletes as well. Well, yes. <laughs> but yeah. And um, so, I mean, there, there's financial reasons and there's just some logistical reasons too, but I know she's super excited to be here. She's, she's climbing wonderful. Um, she's obviously still been training hard and it's great to have her back. Certainly is. And last year she was formidable. She was a regular um, finals qualifier. Didn't quite make it to the podium, but was painfully close a few times. Perhaps today could be that fairy tale moment. We already have an Iranian man who has taken two medals in the business of Dalian in this competition, but maybe this could be the turn of an Iranian woman. Name of the game on this women's route seems to be speed. No woman has managed to top this route yet. Our penultimate athlete, Zenab Kobra Musavi. We're doing her best to get up there. Following her will be our final athlete, first place qualifier, Petra Klingler of Switzerland. Two more men still to climb, Luna Ladevon and Yannick Glatard.
six minutes start the clock for the athlete. She's already had over a minute, one minute, then 10 seconds elapsed, 4.47 on the clock now. And as those splits start to come in, I think we can expect to see her a little behind the pace, Kendra. I think you're right, Liam. Moving now towards clip number six, four minutes and 15 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, right down there. Somewhere kind of lower middle of the pack. It's a great close up of um, the holds there. There's a lot of these holds. They're Swiss Sam holds and they're a rock. Samuel Clavien, the Swiss climber, making those rock holds from rock finding the river uh, close to Sazfe, which really gives them a undesirable amount of friction, or rather, undesirable lack of friction would be a better way to put it. Moving now up in towards that steep section. Places the hook with that left hand. Takes clip number eight. Just under three minutes remaining, 2.57 on the clock. She's behind her to get that hook with the right hand. She's got that in the backhand position. Seems comfortable for her to reach out then with that left hand. Opting to kick underside before making that move with the left onto the hook. And now she's breaking out of the roof with the right hand. Interesting that she's hopped into clip so late on that one, Kendra. Actually, this is the hold that Maria and um, a couple of the other competitors clipped from. It's the closest yeah, hold. for sure. Moving up now. Oh, little step across. Just trying to find that pace. Desperately needs to find some pace as she approaches this ice section. Cut number 11. There's clip 12. Look at that. Over a minute behind the pace set by Tolokanina. Savvy, the penultimate female athlete. Petra Klingler to follow, and then Luna Ladovan and Yannick Latard. Definitely stick with us for the action as this final unfolds. If you are just joining us, very warm welcome to the men's and women's lead finals, the fifth of the season here in champigny en vaumois You're watching Zenab Kobrin Musavi climbing in the women's final, the penultimate athlete. My name's Liam Lonsdale. I'm joined today by the USA's Kendra Stritch in the commentary booth. It's great to have you on board and you can, of course, get involved with the broadcast as always by using the hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing or by tagging me directly. Search for at Liam Lonsdale. Zinab Kubrin-Rusavino makes it into the ice. 
And that's her off just as the time was about to run out. Just a little bit punt, perhaps lacking the season fitness with it being her first comp and her first final of the season. She's going to sit in seventh place ahead of Ema McSwiggan. I said one more athlete remaining in the ladies' competition. Oh, and the ice just ripped there. Bit of a clean to climb next. But before that, we will have local climber Luna Ladevon. Very, very strong athlete. If you've been tuned in since the beginning of the broadcast, you will have seen the interview that we shot with Luna and his brother Tristan. If you missed it, don't worry. It will be on the UIAA YouTube channel. Uh, later today, if not that, then tomorrow. Nice little profile on those guys and their relationship, their competition career so far and their ambition for the future. Just going to be a, a very short delay while they retrieve that tool, but hopefully we'll be able to start the men's imminently. There is Luna Ladevon. Let's take a quick look at the men's results so far. Sixth place, Chen Hyun Lee of Korea. Fifth place, Mohamed Reza Safdarian of Iran. Fourth place, Alexei Marshalov of Russia. Third place, currently sitting in bronze medal position, Dmitry Gabenikov of Russia. Second place, currently sitting in silver medal position, is Hyung Park of Korea. And first place, currently sitting in that gold medal position, is Nikolai Kuzovlev. Still two athletes remaining. No athlete has topped yet. Luna Laravant and Yannick Latard both still to climb and both still with an attempt at that top of the route. What do you think, Kendra? Is it going to happen? Is it possible? It's absolutely possible. Luna can climb very quickly and um, yeah, if he can just read this route correctly, I think he can fly to the top. Well, it's not a flying competition, it's a climbing competition, so Let's hope he maintains contact with the structure and stays within the rules. That'd be a technical, wouldn't it? That'd be a first in the technical incident book. I don't know. If you clipped every quick draw, wouldn't flying still be in the... <laughs> I'll get back to you, Kendra. I will, del I will uh, consult the Ice Climbing Commission and we'll get back to you in the near future. See the light fading now as the sun sets here in champagne en -Vanois. Still just about bright enough for the athletes to see despite the uh, the dark picture on your screen. Don't worry about that. We have got the floodlights on and the uh, the spotlight will be on soon. But the position on the structure and it being inside the structure makes it difficult to light with the spot. <laughs> to the small pebble below just above the lip rather of the naughty step decides to use it with his hand readjusts the tool takes it in the high grip with the left hand and makes that clip really needs to pick up the pace in this lower section Reaches up past the cl sixth clip towards number seven and moves aggressively between each of those holds. Just seems to be pausing ever so slightly between each set of moves, though. What we need is a really silky smooth rhythm like a rhythmic flow to those moves to enable him to make up that time. And we can see already 23 seconds behind Xiong Park. And it's interesting, Kendra, he's 23 seconds behind without stopping. It's just that efficiency of movement. Also, the lack of hesitation on each hold. Thanks, clip number 10. Reaches into the ice now and 
moves ever upwards to make clip number 11. Luna's a, a taller athlete. Do you think we're going to see him skip the move here? It's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, I'd like to think so. This is his home structure. He's very experienced. He'll know the limitations of the moves and what he can and can't do. But it seems, judging from this clipping position, that he's not going to do that. And it, it's like he's never climbed here before. Come on, Luna. I mean, these are small mistakes and perhaps it's nerves, perhaps it's pressure. But um, he really shouldn't be getting caught up in that position. We expect, you know, the local competitors to know all those little tricks. And you can see the rope drag, the rope not falling back through. Less than two minutes remaining, 1.55 on the clock for Luna Ladevon. Hometown crowd is getting loud now, cheering him on. Really cheering him on, and the atmosphere ever increasing as he reaches up with that left hand to the hook with the right. Another big clip there for 13. Misses it first time, and it's these precious seconds wasted. Come on, Luna. These precious seconds wasted that cost places on the podium. Reaches underneath into the Stein. Drops down. Big swing up. Very efficient movement now. Much better from Luna Ladevon. One minute and 10 seconds on the clock. Better clipping as well. Number 14 made. Into the figure four. Left leg over. It's his right leg over his left hand. Misses that move twice, but hits it third time. Needs to keep moving now. 34 seconds behind Kuzovlev in park. Forty-five seconds on the clock and the crowd are going wild. Come on, Luna, get the hold first. Take the hold, please. Into the figure four with the left. It might work. He's out. He's just short. Reaches across in that backhand grip. Ale Luna, come on. You can see him slowing and tiring with 20 seconds on the clock. Makes clip 15. 10 seconds remaining. Luna Ladevon now. Moving as fast as he can. Can he get up there? His time's up. So he's going to sit in third place now. Made clip 15, which puts him ahead of Dmitry Glebenikov with 14, but didn't get to the shine in time, which puts him behind. Hyung Park. Big cheers from the crowd. And a decent effort from Luna Ladevon. What do you think, Kendra? I don't think it's going to be enough for a podium. Neither do I. What do you think of the? Uh, what do you think of his climbing there? I think he, the climbing that we saw on that upper part. I wish we had seen that the whole way. Yeah just looked a little bit a little bit slow in the lower part see his coach in the background there just wasn't quite precise enough when he needed to be that was that moment you know three or four seconds wasted there four or five seconds wasted on that clip prior to that it's all those seconds added up that make the difference between taking the next hold and being on the podium and not there's our final female athlete she's the only athlete to have ever made gold medal in ice climbing and also in bouldering won in Kirov 2015 and in China 2016 Fun fact about Petra in sport climbing, she's only ever been in the podium twice, both times with gold medals. That's a pretty good stat, though. It is a good stat. Weird that you've got the same name as well. <laughs> <laughs> Petra Klingler there begins her route, and if anyone has the ability to move explosively fast, then it is Petra Klingler. She's been doing a lot of speed climbing training, 
for the Olympic qualification in sport climbing this year. So let's see how she fares. Nice and efficient through this first part of the route. to get past clip 16 to win this competition. She's already four seconds ahead of the pace set by Tolokanina. The fact that we've had no tops means that this competition is very exciting indeed. A top would guarantee a win, of course. Reaches up with that left tool to the left side of the splinter. There's clip six. He needs to keep that pace. Moves up with the right hand. So that small edge that she's in just checks it with her hand incredibly strong fingers Petra Klingler Slipping slightly there in the uh, clip splits. She did move a little bit slower through that section. Decides to use a hand on that next hold. Oh, Petra, don't make this mistake again. Into that Stein. I had flashbacks to the fall that she took in Sazfe after she came up short using her hands on a hold. It's understandable why she does it, though. It was the reason that she took gold in Kirov. Right leg over left hand into the figure four to make clip number 10. There's a big Swiss contingent here, and uh, you can hear them cheering on their teammate. Yeah, indeed, there's a lot of the Swiss athletes made it over to Champagne, which is great to see. And um, disappointingly few in the finals, but great that the two that did make it through qualified in first place, Yannick Glattard and Petra Klingler, both first place qualifiers today. And now we really need to see Petra picking up that pace. 24 seconds behind Tolokanina. Better from her. Still needs to accelerate. Looking for those placements. Yeah, really nice flick of the feet. Skipping those feet across the ice. Has the power to rely more on her arms in this steep section rather than having to kick in. Makes clip 13. Just struggles to find that placement. Come on, Petra. Reaches over and matches in the high grip. Easily down into the Stein with that. Oh, a little pop. She manages to stay on the wall. It's going to cost her some valuable power. Just looked a little bit flustered. Better this time into that Gaston move and reaches over onto the ice and really needs to accelerate now. If she can make it past clip 15, then she'll bump Hanare Song out of third place. 50 
one seconds remaining. We need to see something really fast. Those athletes look very relaxed indeed in the ice box. Ale Petra, come on. Moves up into the upper part of the ice. There's clip 15. Moves further again through this ice section, traversing leftwards with 27 seconds to go. Clip 16 is the standard for silver medal and with only 20 seconds on the clock, I don't think it's gonna be possible. She's in that figure nine. Needs to hit that next hole to be definitely ahead of Hanmare Song. She is ahead now. 10 seconds left. She's in bronze medal position. Four seconds. Very quick movement now, but it's too little, too late. Time is up for Petra Klingler as she reaches up to make clip 16 anyway. It's a bronze medal here for Petra Klingler of Switzerland. Silver medal for Yunsyun Shin of South Korea and gold medal, another one, Kendra, for Maria Tolokanina of Russia. Unstoppable. See that move, the right tool, just not in a particularly good spot there. Watch that left hand. Whoa. Went for the Stein, but really needed to be in the upper part of that hold, and she readjusted second time round. I think she'll be pleased with the bronze, even though she slipped down a couple of places from the semi-finals. She's had very little time on her tools to train this year, so to come away with a bronze medal at all is, is phenomenal. She told me last night that she was excited to be here and was feeling good, but it was also feeling out of her element. Well, if that's Petra out of her element, I'd love to see her in her element. Bronze medal here in Sazfe. Goes over to congratulate Maria Tolokanina. We have one more athlete. One more athlete remaining. Those are the results. Petra Klingler, 15.271. Munshan Shin, 16.28. Maria Tolokanina, 16.31. Those are provisional results. We have to wait to see if the judges, uh, the judges sign those results off. We have to leave a little bit of time for appeals. And there's Yannick Glatard, our final male athlete. Another Swiss climber. He's only young, but he's definitely one of the greats. Glatard prepares himself for his attempt at this finals route. The standard to beat set by Nikolai Kuzovlev. Only one person has managed to beat Kuzovlev this year and that is Yannick Glatard. 16.321 is the score set by Nikolai Kuzovlev. That's clip 16, third hold. And then the scores go down from there, from how he took the hole, where his lowest hand was, and, and what he did with it. Need to see pace, need to see confidence, need to see something special from Yannick Latard. Swiss Air has done it before. We'll see what he can make out of this finals route here tonight. I feel like at this point I should do some sort of briefing, like, Please place your trade tables away and put your seats in the upright position. Something like that. I'm not going to do, don't worry. The exits are here. <laughs> yeah. We are winding down on our time here in Europe. Only one more competition after this in the World Cup Series in Denver in two weeks. Indeed, from here we go to Denver. A little break in between. Yannick Glutard slightly behind the pace so far. Mahondra Zasafdarian was one minute elapsed when he got there. Yannick Glutard has four minutes 
one second on the clock. His girlfriend there in the green jacket. Didn't quite see, but possibly his mum stood next to it. Whole Glatard family here to support him. Now he's up there, 11 seconds off the pace. Second fastest to this point. Really matured over the past couple of years. It's great to see his climbing style evolving. Took a year off competitions to complete his mountain guide training. He's now an aspirant mountain guide in Switzerland. Very highly qualified bunch of men and ladies. He'll keep being an aspirant until he qualifies as a fully fledged mountain guide in a couple of years time. Just behind Cuz of Levon Park now, makes that next clip. Moves into the ice and he's no stranger to the ice, spends a lot of time on natural ice. He's also still climbing on some older fusion tools, which are, I think, a little bit better in the ice than uh, some of our modern competition tools. Moves into that low hook position. Really efficient clip in there at number 12, and even though he's doing the slightly slower method, he's really picking up that pace. Matches him with the left tool. Which side is he going to go for, right or left? He goes left side and uses the shoulder on a little pop, but manages to keep moving, doesn't pop off altogether. Reaches over with the right hand into that hooked position. Two minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. Clip 13 made. Over into that Stein. Eight seconds behind Kuzov left now. Really picking up the pace. Oh, butterflies. <laughs> Big reach with that right hand and he hits it first time. Ever the aggressive climber. Takes a bit of a risk, but he's so confident, reaches over himself for that next hold. Shaking ever so quickly into the figure four. Hits the hold next to clip 15. First time, manages to readjust it as well. Oh no, he's popped, but he's still on. Swiss oh, he's off! Oh, Yannick. He took a gamble. He took a gamble. He knew he had to be fast, he knew he had to be aggressive, and he was so, so close to sticking that. So, so close indeed, and that was what the lift thought of the action. He just missed it, and I watch, he does manage to readjust, places the edge of his tool on it, he's right at the back. It popped, he still held that right hand, and as he went up with the left, he was out of there. Oh, you can see that he's really annoyed with himself. <sighs> oh, Kendra, that was, it's kind of hard to take because actually I don't feel like he should be annoyed because he climbed so well. Yeah, if he had just paused, kicked his feet back in, I think that's what he's really annoyed about. You can see as he marches off, he really expected more from himself, but sometimes that's competitions. I really feel for him there. Let's see it one more time. So he missed it. Managed to get it right at the back of the tool, which isn't the best place to have that hold. Bit of rotation popped it off, and he managed to hold it, and he did need to pause, but instead tried to use the momentum. Popped out. What a nightmare. Well, there are your, uh, there are your winners. Nikolai Kuzovlev and Maria Tolokanina. Both delighted, I'm sure. Kendra, what was your uh, your highlight of that final? Wow, that's a hard one. The just the surprises there at the end. <laughs> I'm still uh, reeling from that, but I mean, we saw a lot of beautiful, smooth climbing there from Maria, Nikolai, uh, Park. You know, it was really great to watch all of those climbers. Yeah, it was a really very interesting. Uh, Interesting final. Petra Klingler with bronze medal. And uh, Munshan Shin with silver and Maria Tolkanina with gold.
Kendra, I'm going to head outside now uh, before I do to go and grab some athletes for interviews. Um, let's take a look at the highlights from the speed competition earlier today.